Check this out. Triple dog ear P90s on an ES335. That's in a gorgeous blue finish with one of the widest flame tops that you've seen on one of these. What a fantastic combination. Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show, the Gibson Mod Collection update. What we were just briefly looking at is the 1964 reissue 335 for $7,199 in the aqua sandbar finish. Besides the awesome figuring, color, and pickup combination, look, it's 70s inspired with a trapeze, tailpiece, and it even has a little bit of late 60s thrown in there too with the nylon saddles. But the headstock face was relatively left alone outside of a new truss rod cover. And the rosewood board on that is a fantastic hue. But I was equally happy to see that the veneer they used on the back has the very similar flame figuring to it. That's just a great combination, but then you have a darker neck. And sure enough, that seems to be the new norm, the Gibson Mod Collection decal. But we can follow that up with a blue Raspberry Bliss 59 reissue for 58. This kind of reminds me of some Tak Matsumoto models with the zebra bobbin pickups, but surprisingly, they put gold hardware on this and get those numberless knobs. It's a pretty nice pinstripey flame top, very even throughout. You get some interesting wood grain. I'd love to say I like it. It's something about the combination of all this together doesn't quite jive. But hey, just for fun, we put the perloid Schaller tips on the tuners. We're going back to the early 80s with that one, and that is serial number 211. And I dig the back being a metallic blue throughout. You can't see the wood grain and then the moto back plates just to play off your tuners. But whoa, excuse me. The modifications consist of a chambered body. <laughs> what they do, rip the maple top off and just start chambering it? No, most likely the start of life is a custom order like that. Or a small batch run for a dealer, but it's funny to think. Well, let's tame things down a bit with mahogany gold satin. It's rather plain, but... I like it. It's a regular 50s standard, but it just looks like the old sunken treasure version. Except for we don't get the cool bullet wood for our fretboard, and yeah, these ones were a little bit darker. That was a cool limited edition back in 2016. Check out this video if you need to learn more about it. I guess now when I look at it, I think about my football Les Paul. But natural mahogany vibes? Okay, this makes sense. It's a mahogany top. This model just came out. Typically, you only find these in the TV yellow coloring or red. So being a brand new model and technically being a custom color, that's fun. Gave you the old naked head stock with junior tuners. And more moto for everyone back here with a serial number dating to the 216th day of 2024. But the lefties get to have a lot of fun. Cool cyan. 5100 appears to be a regular Les Paul custom. But it's got three pickups, two of which are P94s in the neck and middle, the bridge position. It looks like they're going for a burst buck or two. And it's just a blue finish. Appears to be satin in nature. But we got that blank truss rod cover, regular headstock. But you're going to notice, oh, our inlays are a little bit different. That's because they're Super 400 in style. But our back is completely matching. I can see why this one sold, because if you were to custom order that yourself with those specs, guaranteed it'd be about 8000 but man, this takes me back rye barrel. If you think it's expensive, remember, it's a custom shop reissue. That's why it's twice the price of a USA one. So more natural tones here. The Moto Guard with some light aging. Okay, it's an acquired taste, but I think it works. But it's been a hot minute since we've seen the mod collection do this again. A nice natural headstock with the old timey Gibson logo. But what's really cool about this is you don't actually have a veneer over top of the headstock. So you can see the headstock wings right here. And if I remember correctly, it's because historically Les Paul Juniors do not have a Hollywood cap. You have to step up to the specials for that. So it's not necessarily that they didn't put it on there. They just changed the color of the finish. Kind of cool. But this one bears serial number 219. But now even more Iomis in disguise. 1899, not too bad for an SG special. I like the name, Evening Sea. However, it's basically just blue. We've got the rap tail, pigtail. You've got P90s that have a cover within your surround. There's no monkeys going on here. This model needs a stinger or some sort of a sailboat on it somewhere. But now this 57 reissue looks nothing like its namesake. We went from gold top to triburst metallic three humbuckers. Wow, that's a lot. And look at the knobs, they've colored them. Looks like you get maybe red and yellow to match the finish. But apparently all three of those pickups are custom bucker Alnico threes. But oh, this looks weird. So 57 reissue, the headstock is fine. Your truss rod covers change, your tuners are good, but that fretboard, that's all kinds of wrong on a standard because it's the customs fretboard. So you get the mother of pearl block inlays. It appears to be ebony. But sure enough, yeah, it's single banded binding along the top. So it is technically still a standard. 
as well as being unbound on the back. It's unique and different for four grand. But lastly, I enjoyed this one. Another ocean themed with the water burst. As a 54 this time, for 43, I think that one's worth it. That's got a really cool playing of plastics here. Normally, I'm not a fan of perimeter bursts, but this one works. You've got the black going around the edge, which matches perfectly with your two P90s, your witch hat knobs. You've got the top reflectors to show off the light reflection of the blue. The wrap tail just simplifies things. You don't have a pick guard, really dark rosewood board. They had a great thing going and then they kind of went a little bit rogue on the back. Looks like maybe a very dark blue or a black and then kind of an amberish natural as a satin finish. And more truss rug cover hijinks. But wow, look how narrow those frets are. But now how's our UK friends doing? They had a glimmering shimmering satin cinnamon. It's white plastics everywhere including your pick guard with a metal switch tip. And then yeah, it's kind of a reddish hue. Headstock was left alone, and you get the continuation of all that goodness on the back. But now at first glance, sequin scale cherry, 1700 euro. Okay, I see it now. I was, I was about to say, what is different about this? They put some glitter flake in it. So if you're playing that thing on stage, it's gonna blind someone when you shine it at them. Otherwise, it seems to be pretty much left alone as far as the front of the guitar goes. But then brace yourselves for the back. You get the continuation of your shininess, but oh my. I'm not sure if it fits the guitar, but hey, Stinger is a Stinger. It makes it a little bit more fun. Interesting handwritten serial number. You'd think they just would ink stamped it at that point, but then they're probably scared somebody to think it's a custom shop or something. That one's a little bit more fun than it first looked. But if neither of those worked for you, what about Alter Violet? Kind of a reddish blue thing that color shifts. They souped it up with uncovered pickups, black pick guard, but then you still have the cream binding, which kind of works with the unique top that they've got going on here. Nice, they did the headstock, gotta love that. Black tuner tips matching truss rod cover. And the back is pretty much more of the same. All things considered, I think that's a pretty decent price for that. Although you might have to appreciate this one better in person because it's really the blue and purple that makes this one special and not so much the red shining through. But now, demo shop time. This was a particularly nice dirty lemon burst for 2,900. I forget who has this exclusive. There's too many anymore. I think it might be Sweetwater, but I could be wrong on that. But natural back and sides, great top, cool color, but they transformed it to gold hardware. And the black plastics brings out the flame even more. I thought this SG Supreme had a pretty nice top. Very uniform. Not all of them are. It was the launch that had some really good tops, but that's just the way it goes. This SG standard was modified. We've seen weirder looking ones. Like we got the tortoise shell style pick guard. They gave you the cream plastics as far as your pickup rings and the knobs being reflectors. You got good wood grain, but what I feel would tie this together even more perfectly is if you had a five piece flame maple neck thrown on it so you could see it peeking through right here to complement all the other creaminess you got. And then in case you missed it, it is gold hardware. But then they go for the junior style tuners. They must have had a surplus of those this week. But there we go. A mod guitar, not mod collection. That does seem to be, so far, how they're going to move forward. Here's another one just for the lefties. 2100. That'll never not look weird. Then another SG. This time for 13, they gave it a single ply black pick guard with zebra bobbin pickups just to change everything up about it. Kind of interesting wood grain. But they also had an L00. You just don't see these every day, so I thought I'd point it out. It's got the cool rosewood back and sides. Then just a regular standard 60s and bourbon burst. There's nothing particularly over the top about this one. Outside of the interesting defects, it almost looks like it was scratched with a razor blade. Because that's not like normal finish checking. Something happened during the finishing process. I'm glad they caught it. And then there was a gorgeous 335 figured. The cream plastics work well with that color in my opinion. And once again, they had the surplus of those junior style tuners. As far as what sold really quickly, they had another one of the 80s white explorers. Still waiting and waiting. It's been almost a year now. Hopefully some first quality ones show up. If we go down here, we can see that one was from the original batch, so not a new one. This was a pretty fair price on one of the faded standard 50s. $16.99. They had a different one that was also $17.99. But hey, you! Yeah, the one watching the video till the end. You get to see the coolest one out of the demo shop. You didn't skip out early. 
It's a Les Paul custom Koa top. Gibson's been toying around with Koa a lot more. Like last week we saw those SGs and I actually called up Sweetwater and I was close to buying one of those just to review. However, I just couldn't find one that had the it factor. Like I like it when Koa is a little bit darker and then has like a lighter streak right here. This reminds me of like the Les Paul Hitman. He's got his little tuxedo on. But this time it's just a natural brown suit with a natural brown shirt underneath. It just had a certain character to it. Even though this thing was expensive at six grand and it didn't sell instantaneously, I knew it was gonna go within the first week because this one just has that really nice mahogany wood grain and koa combo. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.